Thank you so much for joining us on the Photo Funky Show, episode 118. Today we're going to be talking about Smug Mug buying Flickr. Hi, my name is William Beam. Hi, my name is Lee Beam. And in case you haven't heard, last week, late, Smug Mug decided to buy Flickr, or they, as they said, Flickr agreed to be bought. And I'm wondering how Flickr agreed to be bought since it was owned by somebody else. But before we get into that, I want to let you know that a uh, Luminar Jupiter version is out. This is the version that's supposed to bring the Windows version of it up to parity with the Macintosh version. If you've had the experience with Luminar before, they brought it out for Mac first, then they brought out a version for Windows, which didn't quite have all of the features there for it. Now everything's even. So whether you have Mac or whether you have Windows, Luminar is out and functional. And honestly, this is really one of my favorite uh, post-processing tools. And if you're interested, I can save you $10 off the purchase price. Normally it's $69, but if you use the coupon code BEAM, just like my last name, B-E-E-M, that'll save you $10 off of the price of that. It'll also save you off of Aurora HDR or 10% off of other products. You just go to williambeam.com slash Skylum, and that'll get you there. And you can use the coupon code when you check out to save some money. This is this big question I've, I've got. Why did Smug Mug buy Flickr? And before we really get to discuss that, I want to just make sure for disclosure that I am an affiliate for Smug Mug. That's a rather recent thing for me. I just, within the past few weeks, I became an affiliate for Smug Mug. I had no idea this was coming out. And if you're looking for a Smug Mug account, I can save you 15%. Go to williambeam.com slash Smug Mug, and you'll see your discount apply there if you, if you decide to check out based on my recommendation. That's the only disclosure I've got to make because I have no idea why they bought it. And I've been reading... I guess, you know, some of the articles and Don McAskill and from Smug Mug says, we don't really have any plans just yet. Oh, so, good. So, Lee, you and I have both been Flickr users for, for a long time. Yeah. Do you have any idea why this thing's been sold back and forth? I mean, it was its own entity. It was bought by Yahoo. Then Yahoo sold it off to Verizon, who bundled it in with, what was it, AOL? and a bunch of other things. And it's kind of been ignored, I think, by the ownership for the past few years. All I know is that getting Yahoo out of the equation could not be a bad thing. I love Flickr. I've, it's, I'm hoping that there aren't too many changes to the way that the members, you know, the paid version functions, because those of us who are grandfathered into the original uh, payment plan, I don't want to lose that. I actually took it out because it's really affordable. And I think you get a lot of bang for your buck. And if nothing else, just not to see ads while using Flickr makes it absolutely worth the, what was it, like seven bucks a month that it costs or whatever. I think it's like $45 a year now. Yeah. And I don't know if that's, because you, you and I both have the grandfather pricing in there or the model. Yeah. And, and you've got unlimited photos that you can store. Yeah. Which is pretty much unlimited like JPEG. So it's not like you're really going to be taking up that much space. I think I take like just under two and a half gigs with the photos that I had. Yeah. Although I did go on a binge uh, yesterday and, and cleared out a lot of my older photos that I really I didn't want to share it anymore. The thing that I really loved about Flickr in the day was the community and the groups. I had a lot of uh, nice folks that I met and because of Flickr, you know, some of them I would actually meet up on vacations. We would go places and a group of us put together. I know I met up with friends in New York. I met up with friends in Las Vegas. It was that kind of community. But over the years, I kind of strayed away from it as I thought that community moved. For a while, it seemed like Google Plus was going to be the place until Google just pretty much pulled the plug and, and let that die. And now Facebook seems to be the place where the groups for photographers are around, but yet it's a horrible place for sharing photos. It, yeah, it really is. The photos, I mean, they get a color cast and they lose their sharpness. Basically, they just get compressed the hell out of them. They, they compress the snot out of them. The only thing you can really do is upload a, a PNG file, which can't get compressed. You don't have a good view of your photos. One of the things that I admire about Smug Mug now is they will show the full resolution version of your file. So it will look as best it can there. And I think Flickr, Flickr did compress because um, the technology that they had for Flickr, they've since sold off to companies that I use it on WordPress to compress my images, you know, because you want to keep a web page as light as possible. And Flickr had a good compression algorithm. I don't know really what's going to happen 
between these two companies now. I understand that for the time being, that Flickr will run as Flickr and SmugMug will run as SmugMug. But at some point in the future, I'm wondering how that's going to change. For now, I thought as long as it stays as Flickr, I'm quite happy there. I just hope that any kind of change or merge makes it a seamless, easy process for those who, who have existing accounts. Um, because I, I still use Flickr a lot. I don't use it socially anymore because the kind of photos I'm taking are not really for sharing with photographers. And I guess when I first started, I used to get involved in the groups because like you say, the community there was great. I didn't really get involved so much in the communities, but the groups, absolutely wonderful. And sometimes when you had questions, it was a great place to ask questions. But I, I use it now for the same reason that I originally got an account and that is to back up photos and store them. And the other thing is that it makes it very easy for me to share photos securely with a password link. And when I say securely, it's because maybe I've got family photos of, that I've taken and there's somebody else's kids in there and I want to let them see it, but it, you know, they might not be happy to have it going public. So and this is, this is another example where you and I did things completely opposite directions. Everything I uploaded to Flickr was like full public and anybody could see it. But your method was really not so much to share things publicly as it was, like you said, as a backup. Yeah. And then you kept a great deal of that private and albums to share with with family you know for example my, my brother and sister they are not really social media users i think one of them has a facebook account that is almost bare and it's just for the sake of it being there but they never ever use it so when they had a baby i took lots of photos of their baby because they don't have accounts i wasn't going to go and share them on social media and they're they're kind of private people so it was nice to store the photos up on Flickr and make them, give them the ability to access the thing with a, a password or a link and share it with their family members. They could download stuff, print stuff, or do whatever they wanted. So basically they could have the photos without them going public. And I love that. The majority of my photos are actually not public. I mean, my travel photos up there, absolutely fine. But I have, oh, tens of thousands of photos on my accounts and probably maybe 1500 are public if that that's more than i've got now since i've kind of gone back and called off a lot of those older photos one of the things that Flickr does that i think other social media doesn't do very well they make it very easy to share not just the photo that you have but a number of different sizes yeah. so sometimes you want to have the full size sometimes you might want to have you know a thumbnail a small medium or large size Flickr makes it very easy to do that where you can post your photo someplace else. Actually, that's how I got my first free account. It was on a photography forum, like a section of a travel forum with the, the Disney ones. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to share photos. And the way to share it was to share a link. And people used either Flickr or Photo Buckets. I tried Photo Buckets. And the problem is that when you had a popular thread, too many people would come and view the stuff. And within about six hours, you'd used all your bandwidth. And now nobody could see your pictures for a month. So I figured, well, I'm not going to pay for that. I took a look at Flickr and it looked a lot better. Flickr was created, you know, pretty much for dedicated photographers. And one of the nice things about SmugMug is it's owned and operated by dedicated photographers. They're not, I don't think they're necessarily doing this for the money, which, yeah. I mean, there's going to be a business case here. SmugMug is a couple of years older than Flickr. They've never had to go off and get funding. They, they run yeah. a business. And I imagine that even if they don't know exactly what they're going to do with Flickr right now, there's going to be some kind of accountability and business case for Flickr. And I mean, they give you a good deal. I don't mind. I, I prefer the paid version for something that I'm using like this because so do I. you just get a, a different experience. We talked about the groups with, with Flickr and there is a group for everything. I mean, if you've got a Nikon or Canon, there's a dozen groups for that. There's groups for your specific lenses. There's groups for people who want to shoot black and white. There's groups for people who want to shoot in color. There's groups for people Certain who want to... cameras and lenses as it, well, which it, is pretty cool when you're looking for a lens to see examples. Exactly. There are portrait groups. There are travel groups. There are, you know, street photography groups. There's Disney groups, of course. There's too many Disney groups, I think. Way too many. Way too many Disney but groups. But I had some fun with them in the Disney days. But almost any topic you can think of related to photography or a subject that you're going to photograph, there's a group out there for it. Um, and people will get kind of passionate about it. but I don't recall having the same kind of arguments and fights on Flickr the way I've seen on Facebook. Yeah. It just doesn't, it doesn't seem to get quite that bad. But then again, you know, I haven't been there for a while. I've decided that I am going to go and try and revamp my Flickr account and start participating in some of the groups and just see how it goes. Because I don't know if, if this is going to be a good thing or final death of Flickr. I, I, I don't oh, think I it's hope not because I really do like it. I, I don't think it's going to be the death of Flickr. I mean, I'm just wondering 
when I say death of Flickr, will Flickr be merged in somehow to Smug Mug in the future? Well, as long as all my stuff goes with it and it's still user friendly and I get the same services, I that's just like a little technicality. I'm not I'm not really too concerned about it. I I prefer it not to change because I like what I know, but we'll see. Um, I'm not yeah, I'm not it's not something that I'm sweating about. I don't think that you have to worry about that. It's it's bought by an owner that's interested in photography. Clearly they want Flickr to succeed. Yeah. Even though Well, you don't buy I'm, something for it to fail. No, you don't you don't yeah, if you're running a successful business, you don't say, hey, let me throw a few million dollars at this product so I can kill it. That's not the idea. I don't think that's going to be the idea at all. I do wonder if Flickr and SmugMug are going to merge in some fashion and what benefits that may be for communities both in SmugMug and in Flickr. Mm. But it's it's too soon to tell because, you know, from the articles I've been reading, you know, even Don McCaskill doesn't know what's going to happen. But wow. he said uh, also smug mugs kind of work that way. It's like they didn't have any grand plan for it. It just kind of evolved and worked, which is good for me because years ago I was a smug mug customer. I wasn't really very satisfied with it. that was, you know, eight years ago. Now I'm really pleased with it. I'm happy with smug mug and I'm happy to recommend it. And I'm hoping that I can say the same thing for Flickr. It's it was always a great community in the past. I think that a lot of people left as mobile photography kind of came up and social media kind of centered around services like Instagram and Facebook. I mean, if you look at our daughter, she's 16 years old. She says, well, we don't really use Facebook anymore. Yeah, she said Facebook, nobody uses, she looked at me like, well, nobody uses Facebook. It's just the older people. And like, well, you know, she's right. Yeah. It's like they're on either Instagram or Snapchat. Yeah. And we figure Snapchat's going to be dead by this time next year. <laughs> yeah. It's, they, they want pictures. They don't speak with a text anymore they speak with pictures that everything's very visual now that's yeah. just how they they communicate so which you know what if that's what the a younger generation coming up wants smug mug and flicker may be something that that will appeal to them entice them i don't know yeah. it's we'll have to kind of wait and see but as it's just an interesting change and it kind of brings back a little bit of nostalgia to me because i really enjoyed flicker and now i want to try it again to see how i like it and that's the reason for that is because of, you know, Zuckerberg having congressional hearings and all the stuff that's been going on on Facebook. I don't trust it anymore. The only reason I'm well, on has Facebook. Has anybody ever trusted Facebook? You remember last year, you know, last fall, I, I stopped using Facebook. I took yeah. the app off my phone. I did that in, in January, I think. I, but, I yeah. spent three or four months without Facebook, without Twitter, and I was a happier person for it. Well, do you know what I noticed is when I didn't have Facebook is how much stuff I got done. Yeah, I was much more productive with that. But here's what drew me back to Facebook. I got into a program, you know, a training program, and the community for it was a group on Facebook. And I've since found a few other groups on Facebook. I like some of the groups that I participate in on Facebook. If there was a separate app for just the groups, I would ditch Facebook in a heartbeat. Yeah, the only reason that I have Facebook is because I manage social media for a company I work for. So I have to have an account for access, but I have actually discussed closing it down and opening up almost like a blank profile, you know, with, with my name and details, but where I just don't share stuff as my, my points of access because Facebook's, it's time consuming. It, it, look, it's not for me. It is for some people. I get the appeal. It's a great place to hang out, but Flickr sounds a whole lot better. It does. The, the other photography community that I was trying to participate in, well, I did for a while, and recently I, I didn't renew my subscription, was 500px or 500 pixels, however you're supposed to pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't want anything to do with that place. I think there's a lot of beautiful photography there because, you know, on Flickr, there's a lot of mediocre photography with some beautiful photography here and there. But the problem with 500px is in order to get noticed, it's almost like a pyramid scheme. Yeah. And only the people who are already at the top of the list seem to stay there because everybody's following them and then they like whatever they share out. If you're new and you want to get noticed on that site, it seems like it's either it's impossible realistic or to... you have to cheat and use bots and, and try and, and I thought, you know, to get a, yeah. to get For noticed what? on a social media site. For likes. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to spend money trying to get likes. It's just not worth it to me. I'd rather spend money trying to earn more money. Exactly. That is really the news that we've got in our thoughts on Flickr. I'm hoping for the best for this community. Again, like I said, I'm an affiliate for Smug Mug, and I'm a recovering Flickr user who wants to get back into <laughs> it. So if you've got some comments or thoughts on Flickr, please let us know in the comments for this episode. We would love to hear it and talk to you about it.
Thank you very much for listening to the Photo Flunky Show. Show notes are going to be available at williambeam.com slash episode 118. Please, as I mentioned, if you've got some comments or thoughts on Smug Mug and Flickr, let us know in the comments there. Also, if you're a Lightroom user and you're looking to boost your performance, I've got an ebook that will help you out. It is called Lightroom Classic Performance Hacks, and it's available for you for free at williambeam.com slash lrhacks. And you can find the podcast. If you'd like to subscribe, just go to williambeam.com slash iTunes. We're also on Google Play Music, Blueberry, and Stitcher Radio. And that's all we've got for this week. We'll see you again next week. Oh,